good evening to you we will move on with the bible study let's look at the first slide i want to take a new approach for today's study at the first slide most consistent theme of the book of revelation is the lamb winning his bride bride preparing for the bridegroom so there are many war events in the book of revelation which is a mission handbook for any time of persecution trouble and certainly for end time it's a mission handbook it was meant to be a book understood and lived and throughout the most consistent theme is the lamb and the bride we must not take our eyes off the main theme of the book of revelation which is which fits these days very well Uh, the, the lamb is preparing the bride and bride is preparing to meet the lamb revelation 156 from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of kings of the earth the three uh, three what shall i say time wise he was the faithful witness uh, while on earth he was the firstborn of the dead because of his resurrection and he will be the coming ruler of the kings of the earth which function now he is doing along with his church to him who loves us and who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood he has made us to be the kingdom priest kingdom of priests or kings and priests to him be the glory and dominion forever and ever next slide and in the so this is how he rules revelation is a book of how christ rules during the church age and in the days coming up to his himself coming visibly to be the king even now he is ruling through his church and this is how he rules in the middle of the lamb stands i saw one like a son of man clothed in a robe reaching to the feet and girded across his chest with a golden sash so he rules in the kingdom of priests or through the kingdom kings and priests that we are and lamb stands are his churches or the authority he gives his church next one so the lamb stand is of him and lambs are of us our call is placed on the lamb stand now i want to get you an angle you may not have thought about before about his calvary and how he passed off passed into his next phase of rulership lord jesus went out with a shout of victory from mount calvary and will come back with a shout of a battle cry to mount of olives so the bride that we are we are between these two the shout of victory he gave on calvary as he began the descent into hades he left his body and it was all done with the preparation of the father he left his body and went on to conquest by his spirit so it was not the cry of a victim on the cross it was the cry of the victor and as groups join in please uh, please note the i have sent for each group a certain kind of question to answer in between i'll take it up at the opportune time so groups and your lead and the leader please get ready to encourage your group to answer the questions that I have posted there 11 questions uh, so here is calvary's cry and jesus uttered a loud cry i like to say a victorious cry and breathed his last and the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom which means all had access to the throne and blood entered the mercy seat that's what this veil was between the holy place and the most holy place and most holy place only the jewish high priest could go in there once a year the day of atonement and on that day in calvary Uh, as jesus cried and won the victory and later he said it is finished uh, and and at just at that time we find uh, jesus uttered the cry veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom 
So it was an unveiling. Shall we say together, unveiling? Shall we say unveiling? When the center. Yes. Because at the second coming also, there's going to be unveiling. When the centurion who was standing right in front of him saw, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. Now we know this centurion is a battle scarred, battle hardened veteran. And Jerusalem was a place of trouble. And they expected a lot of trouble on the day of the crucifixion of a popular leader. That's how they understood it. But we find uh, that we find that uh, this centurion understood that Jesus Christ went off in victory, not in defeat. Uh, that's how he interpreted the Christ passing away, that it was in victory that the centurion uh, was able, the, the centurion saw and heard the victory cry of the Savior. That is my interpretation of this uh, the way he cried and the centurion interpreted it as a victory cry. Next slide. Now I want to relate. I want to refer you to the next time the shout of the Lord is coming. Revelation 11, 15. Then the seventh angel sounded the trumpet, of course. You may wonder why I went to Revelation 11, 15, because that's where the, la, the, the seventh trumpet is sounded. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. So this is the uh, occasion of the seventh trumpet, how Christ comes to reign. And the nations were enriched and your wrath came and the time came for the dead to be judged and the time to reward your bond servants, the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name, the small and the great and to destroy those who destroy the earth. So you have heard the term from Matthew 24, the birth pangs beginning and then birth pangs climaxing for the new age to be born and for Christ to be unveiled. So these things are, 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 are the momentous happenings that the seventh trumpet is sounding for. So from Calvary's shout of victory, we are anticipating now the battle cry of the lamb returning to reign. The battle cry would be like a row of the lion of the tribe of Judah. We are between these two cries, the cry of victory on Calvary, and we are asked to enforce what his blood would do till he comes. And the, the, the next... Uh, Next slide, please. Christ is coming with the saints in heaven to gather up the bride on earth to reign in Jerusalem at the commencement of the thousand year rule. So the, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout. Shall we say shout? So he went off with a shall we say shout? Yeah, shout, Shout. And he went off with a shout. Amen. And he's returning with a shout. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, that is to marshal the uh, angelic armies with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we, who, who, who are remaining on earth, who are alive and remain, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall always be with the Lord. So where are we going from there having been caught up? We will go to Jerusalem to reign with Christ for a thousand years. 
you can jot down your questions in things not clear or you like to clarify. I will I'll give a time for questions. So write down the questions. So we are caught up and then we are taken with the first the saints, dead saints will be resurrected. Two, we, the bride of Christ, will be translated, receiving the same glorious body, 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall all be changed. And 1 Corinthians 15, 52 also says the trumpet of God. And we go to reign with him in Jerusalem in glorified bodies, whereas the citizens during that thousand year period, nations of the earth will be in their normal natural bodies. But if you recall Isaiah 66, Isaiah 65, they'll be living for many hundreds of years as if Eden has returned. And the lion will lie down together with the lamb and the lion will not be a predator back to Eden for those thousand years. But I want to concentrate on our life between the shout of victory when Christ exited Calvary and his spirit descended into Hades and showed forth his credentials and overcame gates of Hades, took the keys of Hades and of death and gave it to the church. That's how uh, we understand the shout of Calvary. Now we are looking at the shout at his return. We are between these two shouts. And the bride is bride who has been active, energetic about the shout of victory of Calvary is the same bride that is getting ready for the shout of this battle cry that Christ is launching. So on his return, bride translated, enemies destroyed, uh, Jerusalem and Israel saved, and nations again get a chance of a just government of Christ and his saints on earth. So that's my not so brief introduction. Now, next slide. Yes, I will do this also before I answer the question, answer the first question. Zechariah 14.2, so where are we going with uh, resurrected saints, translated saints, enemies destroyed, uh, the, 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 sorry, resurrected saints, translated saints, with Christ, where are we going? Uh, Zechariah 14, 2. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations. And when he fights on a day of battle, he'll be with him. In that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in front of Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives will be split in, the, split in the middle from east to west by a very large valley, so that half of the mountain will move towards the north and the other half towards the south. Next slide. Now, hostile nations overturn. Pray that Sri Lanka will be Israel's friend. Now this will be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who have gone to war against Jerusalem. We are hoping we, Sri Lanka will not be one. We are hoping UK will not be a nation that has gone to war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will not will rot while they stand on their feet and their eyes will rot in their sockets and their tongues will rot in their mouths. This is also the effect that the neutron bomb will have. But we are told this is a plague with which the Lord strikes them. Then it will come about that any who are left of all the nations that went against Jerusalem will go from year to year to worship the king, the Lord our host, and to celebrate the Feast of Booths. Now, remember, they are not going to do Passover again. The lamb was sacrificed once and that's it. What they are going to do is go worship the king, taking tribute to them. And we, we are praying that Sri Lanka will be Israel's friend. Uh, so if any nation does not go, and it particularly mentions in Egypt, there will not be rain. 
Now remember, nations are in natural bodies. We, the rulers, kings and priests will be in spiritual bodies. Next slide. Maybe I should do this also. Jesus' first advent fulfilled the spring feast of Israel right on the day. So Passover was the crucifixion. That is Leviticus 23.5. Feast of first fruits was the resurrection, which was the day after the Sabbath. Day after the Sabbath that followed the Passover was the feast of first fruits. And and that was the day of resurrection. So Christ, the first fruits. Leviticus 23, 10 and 11. Then on the 50th day came the loaves of first fruits from the early harvest, wheat harvest. Grain was gathered from all over Israel and two loaves were made. And it was called the Feast of Weeks, Feast of the Loaves and Feast of Pentecost, 50 days. We, and on exactly that day, coming of the Holy Spirit and formation of the church occurred. So then I want to ask you, next slide. When Jesus' second advent happened, will he fulfill the autumn feasts of each trial? Mm -hmm. Right on the day those feasts are happening. Because the spring feasts, Passover, Sheaf of first fruits, loaf of first fruits, three feasts were fulfilled exactly on the day. Will the autumn feast, yet to be fulfilled in the second coming, be fulfilled right on the day? Trump of God, blowing of trumpets, Leviticus 23, 23 to 25, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first of the month, you shall have a rest, a rest. Reminded by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Then tenth day was the day of atonement. On exactly the tenth day, the seventh month is the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you, and you shall humble your souls and present an offering by fire to the Lord. So when they were anticipating the blowing of trumpets on the seventh day, seventh month, first day, we learned last month, Hiranthini was doing that part of the study how they prepared, uh, informed all Israel for uh, national uh, repentance in, in view of the Day of Atonement coming. So this is the trump of God we are expecting with the shout of the Lord, trump of God, trump of God, and voice of the archangel. We are in anticipation of this. So will the Lord give a great warning to the world with that trumpet. Another question. The trumpets of Revelation begins in Revelation chapter 8. When will be that first trumpet be? Will that geophysical phenomenon happen in our day very soon? Then was there any world event on the day of a blowing of trumpets in the recent past? I'll pause it the last question again. Was there a calamitous world event of warning on a day of the blowing of trumpets in the recent past? Let's say within the last 22 years. Any man has any recollection of a world alarming or a day of great alarm? The whole world was aroused to realities. Okay, let me make it easy. In the month of September, you get a chocolate if you answer this. Quickly. Yes. Anybody remember an event that happened in the month of September? It happened to be that year, the time of the blowing of 
trumpets in Israel. I don't the know. Name, very good. 9-11. 9-11 was an alarm for the whole world to know that um, world changed. World changed. Uh, now I want to direct my question to the LCC. What's the first question? First question is, victory cry of Calvary. Five things done by the blood of Jesus, which is our mission and which is our ministry. The bride prepares doing the purpose of Christ's shout of victory. Will people of the LCC answer, please? <clears throat> The what, what, what did the blood of Jesus Christ do, which we effect now? Jesus was made a curse that we might receive the blessing. Amen. So the blood of Jesus Christ converts curse into a blessing. Very good. Jesus was wounded that we may be healed. Jesus was wounded and by his wounds, uh, we are healed by his stripes. We are healed. Jesus was, was made sin with our sinfulness that we might be made righteous in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5. Yes. Jesus endured my rejection that I may have his acceptance with the Father. We'll, shall we call it reconciliation? Uh, 2 yeah. Corinthians 5. I mean, one, uh, Colossians 1. Uh, 18, by the blood of his cross, peace was made and reconciliation was made. 2 Corinthians 5 also has alienation ended. Reconciliation was made by the... So this is our ministry. 2 Corinthians 5, 18, word of reconciliation is given for us to... So the preparing bride gets... She's preparing by doing the work that the Lord allocated to her. So the... the this we are looking at the shout of victory of the cross. Anything else? Jesus tasted death for us that we might share his life. Yes. Any more theologically uh, termed things that we know by the blood of Jesus? Very good he, list. He bore our shame so that we may have his glory. Share his yes. glory. Yes, yes. Yes. Old man was put to death so that the new man in Christ may live. Yeah, Ephesians come to two. life. <clears throat> Ephesians 2. Yes. Endured our poverty that we might shine in abundance. Yeah, 2 Corinthians 8 9. Yes. Then he was, the blood of Jesus was for our justification, and our condemnation is over. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Uh, what about the blood of Jesus speaks better things for us? Hebrews 12, 24. Yeah. Better than the blood. So, blood of Abel said to punish my brother <clears throat> for my blood. Blood of Jesus said, forgive my brother because of my blood. Yes, so we know there are theological terms attached to the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Blood of Jesus sanctified us, Hebrews 10, 13. Uh, blood of Jesus removed the separation between God and us, Ephesians 2, 13. Uh, so like that. So that's the question on the mission, work and the mission of the blood of Jesus, that the uh, shout of victory, shout of Calvary meant, and the preparing bride is involved in all this. This is our preparation. Any questions from what I have done so far uh, from shout of Calvary to shout of his coming, the way mm -hmm. the feats were explained today? Between the shout of Calvary and the shout of his coming, 
Yes. Where does the rapture fit in? With, does it happen before with the second coming of Jesus? Will the church been already been raptured or church is still here? When one <clears throat> when Mother Thessalonians 4.16 said, dead in Christ will rise first. And then we who are living will be caught up together with him. That has no time schedule mentioned there. But in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, it is <clears throat> after, the, after the tribulation of these days that he will gather the saints from one verse says four, four ends of heaven. Another verse says four ends of the earth. Matthew says four ends of heaven. Mark 13 says four ends of earth. So specifically both chapters say at, after the tribulation of these days. Then 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2 says. Let me read to you 2 Thessalonians 2. Ponyampurunga, 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come. That is, uh, now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And our gathering together to him. That is 2 Thessalonians 2.1. <clears throat> that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be, or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us. To the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So that it begins with coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and gathering together to him, which will happen only after Antichrist begins his activity. Correct? Yeah. So how much of his activity? And uh, now, for instance, the plague of Revelation 18, 8 happened in our day where all the cities of the world were shut down in one day. The activity of the pale horse we can see in our day. Uh, so we are already going through some uh, what shall I say some kind of tribulation of famine uh, world over difficulties uh, so it's the birth pangs, no, which will increase scripture says pang, exactly, exactly. Birth pangs will keep increasing till the birth of his church into the new age and his kingdom coming on earth. So it's better to take that in and be prepared through the birth pangs. And these birth pangs are preparing us, and Revelation 12 confirms it with the birth pangs. The child who's caught up, man child caught up to the throne will be born. And then yes. the question comes is no, the rapture can happen with the revealing of the Antichrist or depending on what time the Lord chooses. Yes. When does the thousand year rule start? Is it after Christ comes the second time? Or if it, if it happens after he comes the second time, what happens to the rapture church? in between the rapture and his second coming? Yeah, that is an interesting question because it is said to clear the armament of Armageddon, it will take seven years. So Armageddon may be a somewhat of a drawn out, you know, the, the, uh, the dead in Christ rise first. That is the resurrection then living in Christ will be translated. Then Christ seems to 
take charge of a world that is getting increasingly destructive. And nations of the world that are gather, gathering, gathered around Jerusalem for war, he is going to decimate. Mm. Now that process with the bride at his side, in glorious body, of course, may he can do it in an instant, but the scripture itself says the, 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 the removal of the armament itself will take seven years. Mm. That is, of course, after the destruction and, and after Satan is bound for thousand years and Antichrist is destroyed by the, by the uh, fire of his mouth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what hap I think what scripture points out is when all these people surround Israel to attack Israel, yes. there will be something uh, supernatural that Christ will make happen that yes. will destroy the forces and destroy Israel will become victorious in that war because it's Christ who fights that war. Yes, and they, they have their national day of conversion. Mm. That's where the 144 are sealed. 44,000. That, that'll be before. That's before. Those are Messianic Jews who will be active during the time of persecution of Antichrist. Okay. Uh, Revelation 11, Antichrist is already operating now in Jerusalem. Yeah. And the two witnesses come from heaven because it's so tough. Uh, and uh, during that time, Israel will have their day of atonement. Coming to see the one whom they pierce, Zechariah mm, 12. Mm, mm. So that's Zechariah 12, 13, leading to 14. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions you anyone has? We'll go to the next slide then. So I really wanted to uh, pitch this study for us to be energized that we are between two shouts. One, the shout of Calvary's victory. We are living hearing it. We live doing it. And this is our sense of victory above the travail and the groanings of the nations. And it came to me strongly that because there's so much groaning, actual difficulties that we somehow the Christians will be able to thanksgiving to the Lord purely as the bride of Christ, purely on his, we are in his victorious mission. Any believer not in that uh, plane will find the daily groans very true, very painful. Uh, so we, we have to consider the birth pangs are real, getting the holy woman to be the bride that births. Maybe the church has been very involved in different, different things, but the Lord is saying, look here, get into the birth pangs I'm giving you. This is your identity. This is your victory. In the birth pangs, daily you will birth a victory. Who knows? Daily a soul will come to Christ because of your witness. We can see, speaking for myself, this is how I feel the extraneous difficulties which are all around us, gripping nation after nation, is telling us birth pangs are real. Birth pangs are real. And the, the, the time is now that Christ is getting his church ready into that supernaturally sustained birth pang mode. Uh, the, 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 tr the transition to heavenly rule, transition to throne rule, Believers affecting it in their daily economics, daily health for their children. Uh, so this is the mode that will win. Yes. Next slide. What does seventh trumpet announce? When the seventh angel sounded and there were loud voices in heaven, saying the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of Christ, and he will reign forever and ever. 
Then it leads to Revelation chapter 12, which is the bride at war, overcoming church, ruling with a rod of fire. That's what the seventh angel sounding is also the bride's victory uh, climax. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness where they had a place prepared by God so that there, uh, there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. That seems to be the time of the uh, tribulation in which church is supernaturally sustained. So we are now getting learning supernatural sustenance uh, so that in that time, we will clearly hear the voice of the Lord, what to do, where to do, where our provision comes. It will all go on like for Israel in Gosha. Next one. Note that Revelation 11 depicts persecution of Israel by the beast as he can someone read this slide, please? Note that Revelation 11 depicts persecution of Israel by the beast as he rises to power. Revelation 12 depicts bride in battle and overcoming the beast with a rod of iron. Revelation 13, dragon, beast, Antichrist and the second beast, false prophet, their reign of terror, some nations overrun, some nations resist. Revelations 14, 1 to 5, male child. Is that the bride in Mount Zion? Revelations 14, verses 6 to 17, gathering of the good harvest. Revelation 14, verse 18, March to Armageddon, foreseen with grape harvest and great carnage, winepress of the wrath of God. Revelation 15, carnage will proceed through bowl judgments. Actually, it should be Revelation 16. Any questions on these statements? For instance, Revelation 13, nations that get overrun and nations that don't get overrun by the Antichrist regime. Uh, how do we say a thing like that? We have a connection to that in Matthew 25, when nations are judged by the king who comes. Some nations are like sheep. Some nations are like goat. You remember? You remember? Yeah. And the yardstick of judgment is how they treated my brethren. Now, brethren may be suffering Jews or suffering believers. But definitely, Christ makes a distinction between nations who stood and nations who fell. But all nations get a chance back in the millennium, isn't it? I don't know whether some nation gets annihilated before millennium, I don't know. Because even Gog and Magog uh, start a counterinsurgency at the end of the millennium, even they are present. So of present nations, as we know, whether any get annihilated completely at Armageddon, I do not know. I, I can't find scripture to say that could happen now, would happen now, would not happen. Uh, but we know the armies that come to Armageddon will be routed. But we also know that the whole nation doesn't come to war now. Uh, so, yeah, now you can see even in Russia, that's a fairly large percentage who 
don't agree with the war, just that they can't protest enough. They don't agree with the Ukrainian invasion. So the Lord must be having some way of keeping tab of nations. One, those who are hostile to Israel. Two, those who are hostile to the church. Three, those nations where mm, there's freedom for church and antichrist terrain rule is only partial or you know not so bad. Next slide. How shall we prepare to be the victorious bride? Now, uh, because it's a bride in preparation and bride victorious that we are talking about, I thought we will look at in detail a little about each church's description in the book of Revelation. Now, can I ask Jehan to read? Uh, Revelation chapter 2, description of the church of Ephesus. To glean what should we, we be cautious of, what is the victory point or the overcomes point. Please read Ephesians 2, the Christ message to the church of Ephesus. Irantini, will you read? Ephesians 2, message to the Church of Ephesus. You mean Revelations 2? Yes. The whole message to the Church of Ephesus. To the Church in Ephesus, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people, that you have tested those who came to be apostles but are not and have found them false. You have persevered and have endured hardships for my name and have not grown weary. Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Whoever has ears, let them hear. What the Spirit says to the churches, to the one who is victorious, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in the paradise of God. Amen. So here we find the weakness of the Ephesian church was they were losing their first love and they had a strong lampstand and they were losing it. So lampstand is the apostolic structure on which each individual believer's lamp can shine. Where this is the church of John's day. And it's a, it, it, at that time, John was caretaker of the church of Ephesus. And Ephesus was one of the largest cities and one of the largest churches and a church with which Paul spent a lot, lot of time. Uh, so, uh, what is the lesson we get from it regarding the Church of Ephesus? Don't lose your first love. Sound doctrine is good. Uh, keep your lampstand in the midst of which Christ walks. So, we, we bring our lamp, though it's a personal call, we bring it together to the God-given lampstand. Uh, so many believers can think their own call can function 
uh, where they like. But that's not how church gets ready for the second coming. The lampstand on which the lamp is kept is the way that we grow. Now, uh, I want to get to the next question. Next question. Uh, where is the next question? Yes. Yam. How was Black Horse active between 1950 and 2020? What will be your answer for that? I'm referring to Revelation chapter 6 and the third horse. First was white, second was red, third was black horse. I'm asking a specific question from the AM group. Now, how was black horse active between 1950 and 2020? Yes, who's there of AM? Mm. Shiloma is there, I think. Shiloma, where yeah. are your colleagues? <laughs> uh, Shalom and I are here, Uncle. Huh? Shalom and I are here. What about Krishantan? He, he's also now here, Uncle. Uh, Krishantan, what is your answer for this? 19... 1950 to 2020. I have sent this on your WhatsApp. Oh, yes, 1950 yes. to 2020, 70 years. How was Black Horse particularly active? Because in a sense, he led the way to the tail horse. So it has a eschatological sequential purpose. So what is the activity of the Black Horse? Economic, uh, he's way he has scale, so he's yeah, has a very good. Is economic it only economic? Uh, what about um, like equality and equity and all that trouble that comes with that? Because scales yeah. can also be balanced, very good, and also it's mammon, so other things that involve the body, isn't it? Hmm. Co consumerism, so all things that went the way of exaltation of the body, uh, body before soul. You know, the age of enlightenment was soul before spirit. But this 1950 onwards was body before soul. Intellectualism went down and bodily desires and lusts increased. Man lived by his body. Understand what I am conceptualizing. So, uh, what specific ways? Any parameters, indices? You said equity. So, the way GDP got distributed, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, because uh, when in judging Babylon, you know Babylon will have economic Babylon, political Babylon, religious Babylon. Mm. And the epicenter of each of those tripartite Babylon might not be the same city. Correct? Mm -hmm. Religious Babylon may have headquarters in one place. Economic yeah. Babylon may have headquarters in one place. Political Babylon may have headquarters in one place, but it's a working syndicate. Mm. In Babylon being judged, Revelation 18, It says, verse 11, and the merchants of the, will you read Revelation 18, 11, 11, 12, 13. And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron and marble, and cinnamon and incense, fragrant oil and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. Bodies and souls of human lives yeah. is the NASP translation. Huh? 
chariots okay. and slaves and human lives mm. is the nasb translation so you can see human trafficking pedophilia uh, pornography flesh trade all included in the mammon mm. activity uh, so will your group present us a paper on a fairly well done treatise of one why 1952 2020 might have been the 70 years of mammon isn't it yes sir at the end of at the end of which the pale horse is galloping furiously with plagues for mean uh, and so on and demonic stuff yes uh next question is directed to friday cell what are the activities of the pale horse friday cell i think only roshan is there huh? anyone is from friday cell yes radley which cell are you I already mentioned the pale horse activity, isn't it? Will you read pale horse? Readily, you have a Bible. Ah, uh, yes, sir. I will give it to me. Yeah, please read pale horse from Revelation chapter six, seven uh, and eight. We can get the next group also ready, isn't it? Come, brother. Yes. I'll pitch the question to the next group so that they can get ready. Yeah. Kohu will sell. Interpret Luke twenty-one and twenty-four in relation to nineteen sixty-seven, the year nineteen sixty-seven. Interpret Luke twenty-one and twenty-one, verses twenty-four and twenty-five. In relation to 1967, yes, Redley. Uh, level six, seven and eight, isn't it? Seven and eight. Yes, seven and eight. Seven and eight. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, "A quart of wheat for denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil." Huh? And the wine. Uh, Radley seven and eight, Revelation chapter six, seven, seven and eight. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, "Come and see." So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him, and the power was given to them over a fourth. Of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beast of the earth. Pestilence is my translation, huh? So that seems to be the one that was active in twenty 2020 twenty and twenty 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 two twenty one, with corona spreading the plague part of it, then food shortages. So we have to see what more. Now I will ask Koval a cell. Meanwhile, hmm, I had put a question to women of worth. What are the three feasts fulfilled at first coming? Koval a cell. Will you interpret Luke twenty one, twenty four, and twenty five? Will you for starters? Will you read it, please? Who's there at the Kohol cell? I forgot Romy's cell. Uh, Samuel Fernando, Kohol cell. Samantika, you are the sole representative of the <laughs> Kohol cell. Will you read? Uh, yes, Anka. 
Luke 21, 24, 25. They will fall by the sword and will be taken as prisoners to all the nations. Jerusalem will be trampled on by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. Uh, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming, to uh, what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Yes. So, what is the catchword there about Jerusalem being trampled by Gentiles? Till what? Till the time of the Gentiles will be over. Correct? Correct? Yes, sir. So, when did Jerusalem return to Israel? When did Jerusalem return to Israel? When did Jerusalem back again became the capital of Israel? 1948? 1967. Ah, yes. 1948, they did not get Jerusalem. Yes. Which means time of the Gentiles is over in 1967. And with the time of the Gentiles being over, what other phenomena were there? 25? 21, 25? Please read. Uh, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. On the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the seas of the sea. So when did the when did people get troubled about the ocean roaring? From about 1967, isn't it? Global warming, El Nina, Lana, ecological pollution. Get the point? So Christ has been very specific in his omniscience and prophetic seeing. To let us know what the times are like. Now uh, we go for women of worth. Actually, there are four feasts which are called the Spring Feast, Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and Pentecost. Yes, they all happen, they were all fulfilled in the first coming of Christ, isn't it? Then, Romicel. What feast will be fulfilled by the second advent? Romy, are your students there? I thought Romy was there. I saw Romy here. She's gone missing. So we'll skip that. Then unsealed. What is the difference between trumpets and bold judgments? Menaka, will you answer that? What is the Difference between trumpets and bowl judgments. We know trumpet sign, Revelation 8 and 9. Bowl sign, Revelation 16. Yes? Any suggestions? I'll, well, I'll I suppose suggestion would be trumpets are heralding. Very good. Uh, an, an era a change and the bowls are pouring out judgment. Correct. Absolutely right. So trumpets are announcements that John sees is going to happen in the future and each of them is a geophysical phenomenon. 
whereas bowls are very specific acts of God done by angels. Got it? You read carefully. Trumpets announce geophysical phenomena. Bowls, angels do the judgment on the kingdom of the beast. Got it, no? Then, is there anyone from Edward Sir? Is Mohan Raj there? JP Melanga? No. Nobody from Edward Sir. So that question goes unanswered. Talahena said, who will be kings of the East? Manju is there. Manju, who will be the kings of the East? Yes, Manju. That's pretty easy, really. Huh? Manju, unmute yourself. Then uh, the former Rajagiriya sir, where's Amrit the leader? Is Amrit there? The uh, Rajagiriya sir question is who is Gog and Magog? Who is Gog and Magog? We know the kings of the East is China. Who is Gog and Magog? That's a little more difficult to answer. And the other question I have asked is from Thrive Group. Difference between, is there a difference between rapture and revelation? Some of it we have answered. And what is the difference? Okay. Then I had uh, sent some questions earlier. Am I to continue the study or answer the questions? We all get together and answer the questions or we go on studying without questions? What should I do? Uh, I will get to the slides where we stopped. Gleaning from each of the messages to the uh, each of the messages to the churches. So we looked at the first one that uh, efficient church was told to get to their first slab, keep their lampstand. Uh, th those were their weaknesses. The next church was uh, Smyrna. Be faithful to death. It, it was a church under great suffering. I will give you the crown of life. He who overcomes will not be hurt by the second death. Next slide. The church of Pergamos. Pergamos means married to the world, flesh entangled. But that was their problem. Hello, Anka. Join the study. Uh, so the ch Church of Pergamos, uh, will you read the message to the Church of Pergamos, Revelation chapter 2? Maybe the whole thing, if you can read. Whom shall I ask to read? Cynthia, will you read uh, Revelation chapter 2, 
the message to the church of Pergamos. <laughs> yeah, she's reading quite well, really. Revelation 2, 12 to 17. Shall I read, Uncle? Yes, please. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things says he who has a sharp two-edged sword. I know so, your works are very... One minute. What moment Christ says that, he's saying, apply the two-edged sword on your life. Did you understand that? So to the church of Ephesus, he says, one who holds the seven stars, one who walks among the seven golden lampstands. In his introduction, he's telling them, attend on your lampstand. To the church of Smyrna, he said, one who was dead and now alive, and what he's saying there by that is, don't fear death. So to the church of Pergamos, when Christ introduces himself, saying one who has the sharp two-edged sword, what is the meaning by that? Apply the sharp two-edged sword to your life. Why? Yes, please read on. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you so also have problems. Yes, read on. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So if we judge ourselves, we will not be judged with the world. Now to the church of Theotira. Uh, Christ addresses himself as the one, 218, one whose eyes are a flame of fire. His feet are like burnished bronze. Already most of that church, Christ has judged. That's why the burnished bronze. They have the doctrine of Jezebel. And they teach people to eat things sacrificed to idols. But to the overcomer is given a rod of iron to rule over the nations. So this this is a strong warning about deceptive prophecies, wrong teachings. Whereas with Pergamos, deceptive doctrine was not their problem. Their problem was plain licentiousness, love of their flesh. This one, uh, they have, and uh, Christ says at one point, I gave you time to repent. You did not repent. Mm. Revelation 2.21, I gave her time to repent and she does not want to repent of her immorality. So that's a fairly serious statement. I don't want to go on with this, uh, these scriptures you may have gone through, but I wanted to uh, emphasize that the victorious bride, overcoming church, will take care of all this carefully. We will look at it again that in our life, we will keep our first love, and not just doctrinal orthodoxy and so on, that we will be careful of mingling our flesh with worldly positions. Uh, Theatira, of course, is a church way out in doctrine and in practice. Then Sardis is dead in its orthodoxy. Uh, so what does what are what are we told about the church of Sardis? Mm, chapter 3, verse 
to wake up and strengthen the things that remain, which were about to die. For I have not found your deeds completed in the sight of God. Uh, so this is a warning for each of us to take care of, uh, keep take care of things that give us life, the reading of scripture, prayer fellowship, uh, the gathering of saints on uh, in God's house on Sunday and any other day. Uh, so remember what you have received and keep it, repent. If you do not wake up, I will come like a thief. So it's a sleepy church and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. And then the overcomer is promised what they, oh, what they need to have to overcome. The next church is the Church of Philadelphia. Church that is weak. I mean church that which has no worldly strength. But God has opened the door which no man can shut. Revelation 3, 7. Uh, who is holy? Who is true? Who has the key of David? Who opens and no one will shut? Who shuts and no one opens. So we, we take from this church that we will go through only doors that God opens. We will be careful that we will not open our own doors. And we are told in this, you have an open door, no one can shut. And your strength is, you have little power, and but have kept my word, have not denied my name. So these, we strongly identify with this church. Uh, so that uh, our little power, but his word. We have only little power. Not denied the name. This causes uh, those of the synagogue of Satan who say that they are Jews and are not, but lie, will make them, I will make them come and bow down at your feet. So religious uh, principalities bow down at our feet. Useful in a country like Sri Lanka. Not useful, absolutely necessary in a country like Sri Lanka. You have kept the word of my perseverance. Revelation 3.10. I also will keep you from the hour of testing. That which is about to come upon the whole world. To test those who dwell on the earth. So that sounds like a special hour of testing. Like the tribulation. They are promised, I also will keep you from the hour of testing. So that is some supernatural provision. How the overcoming bride will be kept through days of trouble. Verse 11, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have so that no one will take your crown. Any questions? This is very encouraging because there is a specific promise how this church will be kept through the hour of testing or temptation. Uh, finally, I want to read Psalm 114. Uh, no, just a little word on Laodicea. Uh, church of Laodicea is the only church who told Christ, I know better than you. Uh, because Revelation 3.17 says, you say I am rich, I am wealthy, I have need of nothing. So church, this church is speaking back to Christ. Uh, they are a complacent church, uh, but Christ says I advise you to buy and there's a promise for the overcomer. So we take care that our sufficiency does not rule over our head because we want to be dependent on Christ. Uh, finally, I want to take you to Psalm 149. I feel it's a good passage to just encourage ourselves. Psalm 149. Uh, Eddie, did you add Psalm 149? Or I'll just read it off the... Okay, I'll read it. 
Psalm 149, a little pattern for these days. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of the godly ones. Let Israel be glad in his maker. Let the sons of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the afflicted or the humble with salvation. This is where we always want to be. As daily we wake up, get up and say, Lord, please beautify me with your salvation. This is our standing. Because let the godly ones exult in glory. Let them sing, to joy, sing for joy on their beds. So please, husband and wife, get together and sing. Uh, singing is very helpful, I find. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Then we move on to more warfare praise. And a two-edged sword in their hand. That's the word going into warfare. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the people. So there is a level of worship, high praise that we move into in which angels hear the voice of command. Angels get the voice of God's word for them to go and do what they have to do. So this automatically happens and we want to consciously do it. As we go through this process, God beautifying the humble with salvation daily, then singing on our beds, high praises of God arise, two-edged sword is pronounced, the word with anointing power and meaning. This executes vengeance on the nations. That is the fear of God on nations come when we do our prayer times properly and punishment on the people. Somehow God sends angelic actions to the devious, demonic, and uh, wicked people when saints are in prayer. Those wicked people may be ruling or the rule, but the church in place of this kind of praying rules with the word of God, intercessions and prophecies, as we can see. People are getting desperate, murders and whatnot, wickedness increasing. We have to arise, execute vengeance on the nations, fear of God on our nation, and punishment on the people. We have to do this. When governments fail, church occupies. Shall we say together, when governments fail, church occupies. Shall we say to you, when governments fail, church when occupies. Governments fail, church, occupies. Church, church occupies. That's how we get the victory. And punishment on people. That is God, sense of God uh, bringing upon censure on their behavior, on their words, on their whatever. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. This is both the earthly kings cannot go to excesses. They are bound by our prayers, prophetic prayers, and also demonic kings are bound to execute on them the judgment reason. This is an honor for all his godly ones. We have to be active in this. So the nation that has a church like this will not go under the Antichrist. And we live from the shout of Calvary to the shout of his second coming. With this, and this is our preparation. Hiranti, can I ask you to lead us in prayer? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the gathering of your saints together around your word, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your word is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path, Lord. Even when there is darkness, Lord, we thank you that darkness is not dark to you. It's light to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you show us the way through your word. Thank you, Lord, for the hope of the gospel. Thank you, Lord, that your word, oh Lord, throws, gives us the hope, Lord, hope 
and to prepare ourselves and be in readiness, Lord. Even as Luke, uh, Saint Luke te tells us to be dressed and be in readiness, Lord. We always have our lamps lit. May our word, O God, enlighten us all the time, Lord. Lord, when when our hearts fail, Lord, may your word pick us up, Lord, knowing that our Savior will return. The same Jesus, the angels told the apostles, the same Jesus will return. Father, that is our hope, Lord. And let that hope never, never fade away from before us, Lord. The Lord, I pray, Father, for the saints, for the church, God, that we would have this one thing, Lord, that we will wait for the wait to hear the voice of the Lord, to see the beauty of the Lord. Lord, keep that uppermost in our hearts, Lord. Father God, keep us, Lord, always engaged with your word, always engaged with your spirit, always, Lord, in readiness, in readiness, Father God. For surely the master comes, Lord, at, a, at an hour and a time that we do not know. Lord, but we know it's the, it'll be the appointed time of the heavens, Lord. So, Father, enable us, grant us grace, Father. Lord, that we, this this one hope, Lord, will never will never fade away. This one vision will be always, Lord, will grow brighter and brighter. In Jesus' name, Amen. Sri Lal, will you lead us in prayer? Hallelujah, Father, we thank you, Father, once again, Lord, for your word, Father, because your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our power, Father. Lord, we know that man shall not be by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Thank you, Father, Lord, that all that we have studied from the book of Revelation, all that we heard this afternoon, Lord, that we know makes us prepared, Lord, Lord, for your second coming, Father, that we know the times and we can interpret the times, Lord, that we are not walking in darkness, but we are walking in the light of your word with understanding, Father. Lord, we know, Father, even as we go through difficult times and, Lord, challenging times, and, Lord, we know these are, Lord, very trying times, Lord. But we know, Father, but, Lord, there is a victory to look forward to. There is a hope that we can cling on to, Lord. And, Lord, we know, Father, that, Lord, that even the darkness that is over us, Father, Lord, we know there is a blessing always at the end of it, Father. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, that we be a church, Lord, that we prepared for your second coming, Lord. Lord, not only, Lord, individually and corporately, Lord, that we be prepared, Father, a bride that is pure and holy, Lord, walking in righteousness, Lord. Lord, through the difficulty, through the challenges, through all the, Lord, the persecution that the church is going through, Lord, we know, Father, even, Lord, the, 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 the darkness that is spreading over the nations and the church father we know lord, that we can we can be victorious we can look forward lord to your coming and we know that everything will change lord for those that are suffering right now lord lord that they will take courage lord lord that there is a hope there is lord lord a place reserved for us lord lord in your kingdom lord that all is not in vain father that lord you are a rewarder of those who diligently search you father every suffering and every tribulation lord lord there is a reward for every one of us for those who persevere and endure father so i believe lord that we will lord in these difficult times lord we will not be disheartened that we will not be discouraged lord your lord right throughout the bible your word says lord do not fear do not be discouraged lord for you are always there for us father there is a hope lord that is lord is waiting for every one of us father that all we got to do is to endure and persevere, Father. Lord, even the seven churches, Lord, you said persevere. And there is a blessing, Lord, at the end of the perseverance. So I thank you, Father, that, Lord, the church will move, Lord, in a way, Lord, not be lukewarm, not be hard-hearted, Lord, Lord, like the last end-time church, the Lord, church, Lord, but, Lord, we be a church, Lord, we are not moved away from your first love. Lord, if we are moved away, that we'll come back, Lord, where we belong, Lord, to the first love. Lord. And Lord, walk in obedience, Lord. Lord, Lord, turning our head upwards, not looking down, and Lord, regretting, looking, not looking backwards, and Lord, regretting, Lord, but looking up, Lord, at the author and the perfect of faith. 
So we thank you, Father, once again for reminding us, Lord, Lord, and Lord, about everything that you have, Lord, prepared for us in advance before the very foundation of the earth, Father. That, Lord, we know every day is a day closer to you, Lord. That we be in such a readiness, Lord. That we be a church, Lord, like in the book of Revelation, in, Lord, at the end it says, Lord, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus, will be our cry, Lord. In Jesus' name, Amen. Jahan, will you also pray? Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you, Lord, for all the wisdom that we can gather from your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have prophesied, Lord, your word has come to your apostles. And Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we know how everything is planned. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the surety of knowing that, Lord, you are, our, you are the Alpha and the Omega. Thank you, Jesus, that we can be assured that our salvation is drawing nigh. And thank you, Father, that we can, Lord, be assured that you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. And Father, that what you promise us, you are able to keep, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, what you are, what you promise us, you are able to perform in the most difficult of times. Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are led by the supernatural hand. And Lord Jesus, we are taken care of by, by your supernatural arm, Father. Lord Jesus, we commit ourselves to you. And Father, as we see the day approaching, that we will also, Lord, know that our salvation draws, draweth nigh, as your word says, Father. Father, we bless you and we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we see the world coming to an end, Lord, this is just the beginning of our glorious life with you, Lord. Father, we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. And Lord, we bless you. Father, just as you, uh, Lord, your word says, just as you saved Noah out of the flood, and just as you saved Lot and, uh, uh, Lot and his family out of, the, uh, out of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lord Jesus, you are able to save those whom you love. And we bless you and we thank you. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Prashan, will you pray that our clothing in beautifying the humble with salvation and moving on to the word in our mouth will somehow by the Spirit of God, we carry out the mission of the blood of Jesus. And the word in our mouth will keep our nation God-fearing that we believe this is possible. Our family prayers, our corporate prayers, that the Lord will make the nation to know that Christ rules. Father, we thank you and bless you this evening as we unite our hearts. Once again, Lord, we thank you, Father, that, that the urgency of the Spirit been released this evening so that your bride, your church, will get into preparation, Lord. Lord, earnestly, Lord, preparing in between the two shouts that what we are called to do, what we are called to, Lord, move on to. Father, we just want to thank you for the time of revelation. We want to thank you, Lord. These are times that are exciting from one angle. Lord, these are times that are challenging from another angle. But we thank you that Christ triumphed over everything on Calvary, Lord. Lord, we are already in a victorious mode, Father. Just working along with Christ for a particular purpose. <clears throat> thank you for the garment of righteousness that we are clothed in, Lord. Thank you that no longer, Lord, that we are defeated, but we are, Lord, made wholesome in Christ for a battle, Lord, that is before us, Lord. Thank you for the power that is released from heaven, Lord, that the anointing that is you're releasing to us, Lord, that the that the word of God will go out with power, Lord. It shall go out with power, Lord, and make a way where there seems to be no way, Lord. We thank you, Lord, the reminder today that, Lord, it is a two-edged sword so that, Lord, that we, the word will examine us as it goes out to the other, Lord. So, Father, we want to thank you for the richness of your word. 
we want to thank you for the instructions of your word we want to thank you for the revelation of the understanding that the power of speaking your word because lord your word says that when your word is sent forth it shall not come empty but it will achieve its purpose that it was sent for lord so lord you have equipped us with a word in our mouth lord a two edged sword in our mouth so that we can work with it lord upon a nation the lord so that we can craft this nation cut it away from the from the clutches of the evil one and lord restore it back to where it belongs father we just want to thank you father for the church is being equipped for such a time as this lord and we want to thank you father even in our nation that you have equipped us and kept us for such a time as this so i pray father that there will be an earnestness earnestness for each and every believer to understand that lord that we need to move into position that even as you want to commission us in that position that you want us to be in lord so father i pray that let there be no lethargy let there be no dra dragging of feet that but lord that we will swiftly move into that position lord lord i want to thank you because you have given us the power of the shout of god father lord you am reminded this evening even as i was listening lord lord it was the trumpet sound and the shout that brought jericho down lord lord it was the trumpet sound and the shout that brought jericho down and father we know that whatever spiritual jericho that hinders and darkens our nation lord that you are equipping us with that same trumpet blast and that shout father that will bring that jericho wall down father lord we just want to thank you we want to thank you we want to thank you that you are the same yesterday today and forever more lord so in this time father help us father help us to to seek you more lord that lord that we will have more of you and less with us lord even as we reflected on those churches we know lord that lord that we will not be tied into the desires of the world but we will be lord caught up into the desires of the kingdom of god and his spirit lord so i pray these days lord that if anyone is grappling lord grappling with being being pulled towards the world that lord that they will be set free lord that those that those cords will be cut loose that they will so up they will so up they will so up and not be lord earth bound but they will be heaven bound in all their desires in all their actions in all their pursuits lord and we thank you this evening father for this time of study we thank you father let every word that was spoken lord be reflected even as we go through the rest of this evening father and i pray lord even as the church gathers tomorrow lord in the morning and in the evening lord that there will be a shout that will go out father there will be a shout that will go out in praise lord lord we just want to thank you that the praise will be such a mighty shout of god that will go up in our praise and worship lord that the heavens will be open lord and the spirit of god will be poured upon your people and may the word that is preached tomorrow lord lord come to a receptive hearts waiting to hear waiting to receive and waiting to become the doers of the word that is been released tomorrow lord i pray a blessing upon every worship team uh, worship leader and every person in that worship team you'll cover them with your precious blood and lord that you will keep them keep their hearts lord in 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 union with you throughout this night and lord we bring your preachers lord this tomorrow father in the morning and evening and even in the signal lord we pray the lord that there will be such a move of the word that the move of the word that will touch the deep recesses of the heart lord that the word will be so anointed that lord that people will receive and they will lord know that there is a move of god that has started in our minds and they will be drawn into it father in jesus pray precious name i pray amen